Hi, I am Jerome from Fastlane. Welcome to the series on the Cisco Unified Wireless Networking Solution. Today I would like to talk to you about this message you see on the board, error command is disabled. That's a message you get when you try to configure an access point manually to discover its controller. So why do you get this message? Well, as you know, the access point tries to discover a controller. That's the thing it does. If it's a web or cap web, it needs to discover a controller. So it has five or slash six ways of discovering it uh, using broadcast, DHCP option 43, DNS, over the approvisioning if you run code 42552 or something. This feature disappears on 6.0. Uh, you can also pre-configure the access point or it can also remember some controllers it had uh, joined before. So the rule is that the access point can be configured manually so that it can discover a controller if none of these methods work. So you can use the LWAP uh, family of configuration commands where you say LWAP AP and then you can say controller hostname IP server etc. So if you configure any of these commands uh, for example IP address for your controller um, and if you, the controller has already been discovered that is to say if the access point by any mean has previously discovered a controller, you'd get this message. It doesn't mean that the access point has joined the controller. It just means that by one of these means, the access point has a way of getting to the controller without you configuring it manually. So as soon as it has a way without you configuring it manually, the manual command is disabled. Okay, so what do you do if you do want to play with that command and want to um, experiment with it? Well, Sadly, it's a backup scenario, so as soon as the access point discovers the controller, this command is disabled. So what you have to do is to have the access point forget that it discovered the controller. And this is only possible by clearing the LWAP private config on the access point. The bad news is, you cannot clear the LWAP private config on the access point if the access point is just like it is now, uh, with a discovery process in it started uh, and not on the controller. So the first step is to have this access point join a controller. It has discovered the controller by some means. You have to go to the end of the process and make it discover the controller completely. So here on my setup, my access point is um, 1242C. And you see 1242C is on VLAN 80, uh, which is a wrong VLAN in my case. I need to have this access point um, in VLAN uh, 20 for it to discover the controller properly. So if I go to interface 3 and I say switch port access VLAN 20, I'm going to do a shut, no shut on that port uh, and that will put the access point in the right subnet so that it can discover the controller by a simple broadcast. I'm, I'm going to use time lapse so that you don't have to wait uh, 10 minutes for the access point to reboot. Okay, so a few minutes has passed and as you see my access point has rebooted and it has now joined 2106A controller. So now that my access point has completed its discovery process and could successfully join the controller, um, if I try to clear the LWAP private config, you'll see that I'm still having a problem. Private config the command is still disabled. The reason why is because the access point is nice and easy and happy on this controller, um, so it has no reason of you clearing its, its configuration. And actually there is a protection for that, so that you don't clear the configuration by mistake. Um, if I go on my controller, and if I say show AP summary, you can see that I have my access point, which is that guy here, 56AC. So 56AC is here. My access point has successfully joined the controller. So if I want to clear the private config, I need first to do something which is change the default credentials to get to the access points. As you know, the LWAC access points have a username and password that you can use to get to the access point CLI. And by default, those values are Cisco, Cisco. Well, as long as those values are the defaults, you cannot clear the LWAP config. You have to change those values and then only will you be able to connect to the access point and clear the config. So from my controller, I'm going to say config AP, username, and as you can see, you say username value, um, then password, and then of course the access point you want to apply this config to. As soon as I do this, um, if I go on this access point, I'm going to exit. And if I want to connect to this access point, if I type Cisco, it's not going to work. I have to use the new password I implemented. And if I want to go to enable mode, I still need the same password. So in my case, as you saw, I used Jerome. 
As soon as I do that, now my access point has a non-default Xenomen password and I can try to clear the LWAP private config. It's still not working and that's for a simple reason. It's because the access point is still connected to the controller, so it's not isolated. So the last step I need to go through is to get to my interface and put the access point in a VLAN where it loses connection to a controller. So for example, VLAN 80 or VLAN 90, I don't know. Uh, when you do that, the access point is going to timeout here. Um, and as soon as it's going to timeout and lose connection to the controller, it will be in that state where it does not know any controller anymore. It doesn't have a default Cisco Cisco credentials. Therefore, you'll be able to clear the private config and inject a manual configuration to this access point. Notice that I put the access point in a VLAN which didn't exist on the switch. I do not want to have this access point in a VLAN where it's going to be able to have information about uh, its controller. So see it's going back to discover mode because it lost the controller configuration. So now if I type clear LWAP private config, I can type it twice so that you can see it, it's perfectly working. Okay. Now if I want to say LWAP AP um, I don't know, whatever configuration we want to set. For example, control IP address. Once again, control IP address is, I'm going to put a dummy IP address, let's say uh, 10.99.99.99. If I enter this IP address, you see that this command is now taken. I can type it as many times as I want. Um, so you can play with all the others LWAP uh, AP uh, configuration uh, commands that you have on the access point. Um, is there a way to check if you really use that command uh, LWAP AP control IP address to enter the controller information? Yes, there is. So if I get on one of your access points and if I want to verify if you really use that command, I can say show LWAP IP config. And if I say that, you can see that my primary controller here is 10.9999, that's the IP address I configured. For you to see what I'm talking about here, I am on another access point, which is uh, 103A. And as you see, so before, uh, 103A is the other access point I have here on my, on my controller. So this access point is also on the controller. But on this access point, I did not configure any um, control IP address manually. And if I say show um, LWAP IP config, Although it's connected to a controller, you see that the static configuration is empty. So if you run this command, show LWAP IP config, you can clearly see if the controller was discovered um, automatically, in which case this configuration is empty, or if you enter this um, LWAP configuration command, in which case you see the primary controller manually configured. That's it for today. I hope it was useful for you. I would like to thank you for watching.